Oh my, let's just lock that up here, shall we? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment. Today, we are testing yet again a little box that has thus far largely failed us. Um, but there's been an update. So let me let me give a little bit of history here. In case you're watching, this is one of the first Epifan videos you're watching. This little gadget here is called the Epifan Webcaster X1. And audio sounds like crap. On the audio sounds like crap. That is superb because that is exactly the problem that we had before and apparently we're having again. So we're gonna let this stream for a little while because I wanna make sure that Epifan sees exactly what's happening here. But let's just uh, let's just go through this thing. So this is uh, the Epifan Webcaster X1. The idea behind this box is this is a dedicated hardware streaming device, dedicated to a single platform. This one is dedicated to Facebook, the one that you are watching me on right now and probably not hearing me because Ryan telling me the audio is crap, is sitting right here, it looks exactly the same. It has antennas on it because they allowed Wi-Fi on that one for some strange reason. Um, and that one's to YouTube. So I got, a, I got a Facebook one and a YouTube one. In theory, this should be a supremely awesome solution because a single dedicated piece of hardware means that you can just you can just go. It should just be easy. Plug it in, hit go, and go. And the interface uh, is, is not bad. It's actually an Android-based interface. And the interface is okay as far as how you configure things. It's a, it's a little weird. You have to connect a mouse to be able to do anything. Uh, it doesn't come with the mouse. You have to use a wired mouse. It doesn't have Bluetooth. I Or in this case, I bought a Radio Shack wireless mouse with its own little wired transmitter, and that's what I can control this with. Uh, my Apple wired mouse would not work, go figure. But when I first got this thing, and this is, we're talking October, November, or something like that, um, it didn't work. The audio was completely decimated on output, and I tried it on both devices, with the same thing on the Facebook one and the YouTube one, no bueno. And so I went back and forth with them, and they finally came out and said, all right, we, we realize we have a problem, we're working on it. Well, it was supposed, fix was supposed to come in December, and then it was supposed to come in January. And then finally in February, it came. And that update came earlier this week, and I'm writing that update now. However, from what Ryan is telling me out in the other room, the audio is not good, which means that the problem is still there. Now, their, their official statement on this was that in their rush to release, they, I guess I should just read it to you. Let me find the exact statement to make sure I don't misquote them at all. Um, but essentially in the rush to release, they didn't do enough testing. And that's, uh, you know, not exactly the kind of thing you want to hear when you're spending a couple hundred bucks on a box. So let's see here. The official statement was, uh -huh. okay. On the Webcaster X1 stutter issue, as it was referred to internally, as we added more features in our development, we exceeded the load of the processor and the abilities of the OS to manage multiple concurrent processes. It should have been caught in our verification, but in our haste to get the product to market, we missed the issue because of the video slash audio used in verification was less susceptible to overloading the processor. Now, I'm not quite sure what that last part really means because you're feeding an HDMI signal into the box. That's it. That HDMI can come from a camera come from a switching system should be able to come from absolutely anything at the end of the day all that's going in is hdmi hdmi is hdmi i think i mean maybe i maybe i just don't understand the technology but that's what's coming in and so um apparently they didn't test enough and it didn't work right now uh for those watching live, if you are actually able to hear me, please do comment. And the reason, even if you're just saying hello, and the reason is because I am watching the Epifan interface on my television, which I will show you in a moment, and I should be able to see those comments coming up there. I can see right now, I've got a thumbs up, I got six live viewers, um, and I'm really curious now to see the comment system come up on there. Okay, so I ran all these tests before, obviously it didn't work, they admitted it didn't work, they issued a release, an update, and that's what's happening right now as we're streaming from that. Now, one of the things that I've noticed, unless I'm completely misremembering it, I'm pretty sure, maybe I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure that initially you had 1080p as an option for streaming to YouTube, which frankly is obviously what you want because, you know, you want the 1080p. If you're putting out 1080p, you want 1080p. Right now, this box is only allowing me to do 720p, so that's what is streaming right now. Now, the health of the of the stream is showing as good on my um, on the YouTube page, and I'm hearing Ryan is the tell me if the audio is still crunchy or if it's gotten better, and I'm not seeing any comments coming in, so that is making me wonder if there's actually comments. Hold on, I'm going to look at the YouTube comment page and see if they're showing up there. No, so I'm not getting any comments yet. So even Ryan, you out there, um, throw up a comment just so I can get something on the screen here. 
And let's show you what this interface looks like. So I'm looking at a television right now. The box has HDMI in, that's your, and it's still crunchy, he's saying. Um, HDMI in, that's your signal that's coming in from wherever, from your camera, from your switcher, from anything. You should be able to just take your, your DSLR, DSLM camera, plug it in here and go. That's all you should have to do. It also has an HDMI out, which you have to configure, you have to have, if you want to be able to configure the device, which obviously you need to do, and um, to be able to see the comments, which is one of the kind of cool things. So you take a computer monitor or a television as I have here, and um, and off you go. Ryan, do do add a comment there, buddy. I want to see something come up on the screen. And anyway, so that HDMI now is now going out to that television. So let me show you what this looks like. Um, so, okay, you're gonna get a mirroring effect, a, a looping effect, but you can see there, we have a couple of controls. You've got a stop button to stop the stream, um, a logout preferences and settings, and then you see the viewer count. And okay, a comment has just come up. Oh, but I didn't, the comment's at the top of the screen. So let me just run over here and tilt this up so you can see what this should be looking like. So there's a comment. Oh, and another comment coming in too, excellent. Okay, so some comments coming in. So that's what it looks like, which is kind of cool. You get this whole, on the TV, you get this thing there. Um, Nogales TV is saying, thank you for the info about this product. Looking forward, uh, looking forward about in the future. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to this thing working in the future as well. So, because if the audio is still crunchy, then it sounds like we, we still have a problem. Um, as far as where you can stream to on YouTube, I will tell you this, you can just stream live to your, you have a live now channel that's just there, uh, but you can also create events. And that's what I do for all the photo moments is I create an event that will go live at the time at 9.30 Pacific. And then I start streaming to that from my streamer, whether that is the VDU hardware, whether that's this FFN box, whether it's Wirecast. And the nice thing about that is that you can get the stream going, make sure that everything is good and solid, preview it on YouTube before you hit go live. Pretty slick. And that is exactly what I did here. Now for an event, for a live event, you have to log out and back in to see the event. So if you just go onto YouTube, go to the YouTube's website and, um, create a new event and then go to your Epifan. It's not going to be there. You have to log out and back in. It's easy to do though. You, you hit the logout button, which you can see. Oh, now I've, of course I've, uh, lowered the screen. So it's uh, raised the camera so you can't see it anymore, but there's a logout button. You click that and then it immediately comes up with a, uh, eight letter code. It tells you to go to google.com slash device and punch in that code. So you go to your computer, google.com slash device, punch in that code, and it says authorize, which account do you want to authorize to? And then within seconds, the Epifan shows up. Okay, now you're logged in. And now that you're logged in, you can go into the settings and choose which event you want to stream to. So that part of it's great. So the interface is, is let's call it acceptable. Um, it's good enough. The, the fact that you have to buy a mouse, you have to have a monitor, you can't access it over the web. This is one of my big frustrations here. You, there is no web interface. You should have a web interface, this thing. You should be able to go to IP you know, 10.0.1.8 or whatever to connect to that device so you can control it from your computer. So you don't have to connect an external screen and an external mouse because that just adds, you know, that's just more crap that you have to have. Um, so that's a bit of a bummer, but they said it's something they might add. I don't know. Obviously, priority is getting this thing to work. So audio sounds like um, it's terrible, uh, which is really, really unfortunate because that was the primary issue we had before. The audio was dropping in and out, siloning or disappearing completely, stuttering, whatever. So I will listen to the recording and find out just exactly what it was. And if you're watching this not live, I will be... Uh, let's see here. So how are we going to do this? Well, I'll, I'll just kind of jump. You've heard it already. If you're, if you're watching this not live, you've heard it already. I've gone back and forth a few times between the audio, between the good local audio, because I'm recording it here, and the um, less than good audio. So that's that. I am I am a little um, a little disappointed. Now, here's something really interesting. <laughs> Epifan's got some guts, I'll tell you that much. They've just released, or about to release, or have released a new box called, hold on, I'm going to get this name right, the Pearl 2. Now the Pearl 2, let me see if I can, let's pull this thing up here. I gotta plug this guy back in. I was trying to route the streamer through my switcher and that was that worked, but then of course it did the mirroring thing and it was like an infinite instant complete cluster. So that clearly didn't work. I kind of forgot about that little detail. Um, oh shoot, let me uh, plug this back in too. So right before we go live, went live is really funny. I'm running around like crazy trying to get uh, trying to figure out how to get the signal through. And I got it through, but then realized the mirroring thing was happening. Okay, so let's go to the Epifan website. Let's uh, switch over to the computer. And Pearl 2, here we go, right on top. So this is 
a new product. This is a very high-end streaming product, $6,000 versus, what was I forget, I forget the price on this other thing, um, on the Epifan products. Come on, where's the Epifan? I mean, where's the, uh, here we go, X1. So 300 for the box that I'm using right now that isn't, doesn't, apparently is still not working right. Um, <laughs> double it and move it a decimal place, you get to $6,000 and they want me to, to, they want me to play with one. They want me to talk about it. So we'll see. And this actually goes all the way up to 12,000 for the big rack mounted. I don't know what the differences are. And this is, I think, more than just a streaming device. I think you can do switching in it. Uh, not really sure. So we're going to find out. We're going to find out. They're going to send me one of those to play with sometime in the uh, in the near future here, sometime in February, apparently. And like I said, they got some cojones to send this to me because I've been pretty uh, obviously harsh on this product, given that it doesn't actually work. Um, so a little disappointed. So obviously, this I did an initial test this morning before I went live. It was working. It sounded like I was hearing some stuttering in the audio. Couldn't be totally sure because it just it was a quick test. Decided we're gonna go. We're gonna go for it. We're just gonna do it. There's no test like a, a live test. So that's what we're doing here. Sounds like it hasn't been that great. Um, but again, we're going to uh, find out later. So thanks for those who are watching live. I realize it was probably a very bad experience. The live count has dropped off dramatically. So that tells me that it is not a great experience for you all. Very, very few comments today. Um, Nogales and, um, and myself, apparently, is Ryan out there. That's it. All right, guys, stay tuned. Hopefully, we'll have more good news, better news at some point in the near future. But for now, it's not looking so good. Sorry. See you later. Bye-bye. Cheapest freaking mouse transmitter thing, like a $30 mouse or no, $20, $19 mouse from Radio Shack. Peace out.